Hey, it's Tony with 319 Photography, 319photography.com. Thanks for tuning in. And today, in this video, we're going to talk about a really, really exciting tool that will help you create some amazing night sky images. So stay tuned. Let's check out the Move, Shoot, Move, Rotate. So we're going to talk about the Move, Shoot, Move Rotator, which is a fantastic star tracker for anybody who's interested in doing wide field astrophotography and producing some fantastic night sky shots. But before we talk about the tracker, or even how to set it up or anything like that, uh, we're going to look at kind of the basics of how you, you build your base for your tracker because a sturdy base is absolutely the first thing that we have to consider when we're talking about tracking the stars. So first things first, I need a nice sturdy tripod. So this is my go-to Manfrotto 055X Pro that I've had for, gosh, a long time. It's an oldie but a goodie. And I love this thing because it's a beast. It is very, very rock solid. That's always going to be my base nine times out of 10 when I'm tracking, when I'm producing long exposure, and I mean long exposure, tracked Milky Way shots. Okay. You'll notice here, instead of a ball head that I have attached, what I have is Move, Shoot, Moves Z platform. Now, I'm going to get into talking about how this Z platform is super, super handy and how it's very, very sturdy and even just makes everything even more of a sturdy base because of the way it, it centers the gravity of the tracker over the tripod. So that's first, absolutely first. Guys, if you don't have a good sturdy base for your tracker, you're already putting yourself at a disadvantage. So in the next segment, I'm going to show you how we use the Z base, how we put the tracker on top of it, and then how we attach the camera. So stay with me. We'll check that out next. All right, so I said we were going to talk about this Z platform. So I've got two. Uh, one is attached to my tripod right now. But I've also got another one, and I'm going to use this one for demonstration purposes. So the Z platform has got um, a couple different pivot points here that make it really easy to not only align the tracker but then to position your camera for photographing the Milky Way or the night sky. Uh, you'll see that there's different levers here and I, I can move this thing at a couple different pivot points here. And ideally what this is going to allow, allow me to do is to keep the center of gravity not only over the tripod but then uh, over the tracker itself and the motor. So when I get this second one attached to the tracker, I will be able to demonstrate how that all works. Uh, but on the base itself, right, on the Z platform, there's a little uh, release lever here that allows me to uh, pan the Z platform. So this could also be useful, extremely useful do, for doing panoramas. And there are, uh, there are numbers here, there are markings just like you would find on a tripod when you're doing a uh, panorama. So it could be very useful uh, for normal daytime panoramas as well as you know alignment and setting up for you know, nighttime photography. So something to keep in mind. It's a really, really useful tool and a great little invention by Move, Shoot, Move. So let's talk about how we put this guy on this tracker. So I'm gonna set this guy down and here it is. This is the Move, Shoot, Move rotator. Yes, this is, this is it. This tiny little thing is a star tracker and it's the coolest thing ever. It really is. So the bottom of the tracker has a thread on it and that's a standard thread that you could thread into any base plate on a ball head or you thread it into this little guy right here. So I'm going to attach him on the tripod and it's going to take me an embarrassingly amount, long amount of time because it is nighttime. I'm actually about to shoot the Milky Way. I'm out here in Capitol Reef National Park. And 
all I can see is the lights for the video shining right in my face. So I'm trying to do this and make myself look cool at the same time. I'm probably not pulling it off, but that's okay. You'll forgive me, I'm sure. So finally, I get this guy tightened on, and now he is in a good, good tightened position there on that Z platform. Now, here's where the magic happens for the Z platform. Not only can I pan the tracker, right, but I can also easily tilt the tracker. So finding alignment here, and we'll talk about how to align this guy in just a minute, but finding alignment is super Super easy, especially with the Z tracker. I don't have to worry about the jerkiness of a ball head. So a lot of people will go ball head to tracker and then uh, ball head to camera. But that has a lot of jerkiness to it. This is a very much more smooth operation without having to worry about a great big or complicated alt asthma style base. So uh, in the next segment, I'll go over how to attach the other Z platform and the camera and then we'll talk about doing some alignment. So uh, stay tuned. All right, so let's look at how we put this camera on another Z platform and on the tracker itself. All right, so I've done it for you before we started the segment of the video. Honestly, because I didn't wanna you know, just look like an idiot, I just wanted to do it fairly quick for you guys, but it's really easy. So I've got the Z platform attached to the bottom of the camera, and then it has another thread at the, bottom, the base of the Z platform. So I can just easily thread that on to the thread on the top of the tracker. And then it's there, right? It's super simple, super easy to do. So you can see I've got two Z platforms, one on the base, uh, connecting the, the tracker to the base, and then one connecting the camera to the tracker. So to align this guy, we know that the tracker has to be facing north because it has to be aligned with Polaris. Right? So if you don't know where Polaris is, there's a, a thousand apps out there that you can find that'll help you find Polaris. Or if you just look up into the night sky and you find the Big Dipper and the four stars that make up the pot, if you will, of the Big Dipper. Look for the top cornermost star and you can follow that across the sky, almost straight across. It's a little diagonally and down uh, and you'll find Polaris. It'll always be there. So that's how I'm going to start out orienting this is just towards the North Star. Okay? Now the cool thing about the move, shoot, move is they give you options. You can get a polar scope and you go through the hassle of trying to scope through a polar scope and aligning through Pol for Polaris that way, or you can do the easiest thing in the world and you can get their kit that comes with a green laser pointer, right? Now this little guy, when you point him up into the sky, you can follow the beam all the way up. It comes with a holster or a sheath or a holder, depending on what you want to call it. And you slide your green laser pointer in and you can screw it down, right? And it'll stay in there. Now, you take this little guy, he fits on the move, shoot, move. And you kind of want to center him up with the middle of the tracking base there. Okay. You center them up at the tracking base and when you turn them on he'll shoot up into the sky. Okay. You want to make sure that your camera is clear of the laser and I'm going to tell you guys it's usually a better idea to align your tracker once you've got your camera on the apparatus. Because if I align this first and then I put my camera on the tracker, there's a very high likelihood I'm going to knock it out of alignment. I'm going to move the tracker around and move the tripod around. So get everything on the whole contraption and then worry about alignment. 
So with the laser on, and I'm shining up to Polaris, now all I have to do is move the, the Z base, the Z platform, either pan it left and right, or move it up and down. And I will go through a series of steps to get this laser pointer pointing directly at Polaris. So I'll usually try to follow the beam up instead of you know trying to see it up here. I'll get down, I'll follow the beam up, and I'll move the laser either left or right by panning left or right or moving it up or down. And I am right on Polaris right now. It's that easy. Alignment on the move, shoot, move rotator is that easy. You get one of these, you no longer spend 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour, especially when you first start out using a tracker, trying to align using a polar scope. And sometimes it can be difficult with the move, shoot, move alignment that easy. And that's the coolest thing about the move, shoot, move. So now with the camera on, I've got the tracker aligned. I can turn my laser pointer off. I can even pull my laser out. I usually leave the sheath, so no big deal there. I'm ready to go. All I have to do is turn the tracker on by holding the button down that's on the right hand side. And I'll talk to you about some of the settings here as well um, here in just a minute. But once it's on, it's going. It is absolutely going. Uh, so there's nothing to worry about there. Now all I have to do is worry about my camera settings and taking the image. So if you're not used to tracking the night sky, but you're used to shooting the night sky without a tracker, you're probably used to settings that are somewhere around ISO 32 or 6400, uh, f 2.8 or faster if you have that lens and usually somewhere a shutter speed at less than 30 seconds that's without tracking now with a tracker you can really really do a longer exposure you can drop your iso to about 500 you can close down your aperture maybe stop it down to 32 or 35 and you can track for five minutes that's a great that's a great solid amount of time for tracking guys you will pull out a ton of detail in the milky way in the night sky and you'll be amazed what you come away with using a tracker especially one that is so simple so easy to travel with so easy to carry and most importantly so easy to set up and align so next i'll go over some of the settings that are on the front of this tracker and how to set them appropriately so that you get the most out of your tracker. Okay guys, so I pulled my camera off this just so I could orient more towards the camera and I didn't have any weight uh, on top of this because I had to get it in a funky orientation so that you all could see what I was talking about. So first things first, on the front of the Move Shoot Move tracker, it's, you have two buttons, right? The one that's closest to the N and the S, that's your power button. If you hold that down until everything flashes, now your tracker's on. And that's really all you have to do to turn it on. The motor is running at that point in time. If you've never used a tracker before and you're not you know, familiar with them, the motor being on is almost imperceptible, but I promise you it's running. You can't hear anything either, it's, it's dead silent. So the N and the S are a couple important settings. The N is for the Northern Hemisphere and the S is for the Southern Hemisphere. So you will need to set that appropriately depending on what hemisphere you are in. To change from the N and the S, all you have to do is that same power button, just tap it. Now you're in the su Southern Hemisphere and you can tap it again to come back to your Northern Hemisphere. On this side, you have a couple stars. You have a, a star on top and a star on bottom. It will default to the top star and that is your normal celestial tracking speed. 
That's where you would want to be if you're tracking the stars, the night sky, you're photographing the Milky Way. This half tracking speed, if you hit the, the, that button closest to the stars again, it'll switch it to a half tracking speed. The half tracking speed is supposedly able to allow you to capture the night sky and the foreground uh, without the foreground being blurred. I'm going to be real honest with you, while I love the move shoot move, while I love all types of trackers, especially the move shoot move, that half tracking speed stuff doesn't work. Okay? So I would just forego that setting. So for really basic Milky Way night sky photography, you need to be in the setting with that first top star illuminated and you need to make sure you're in the appropriate hemisphere setting. Other than that, it's easy, it's good, it's ready to rock and roll. So talking about the, you know, the half tracking speed and making sure that the foreground's not blurred is a very interesting topic that uh, brings up a point I, I want to discuss just for a moment. When you track, when you track the night sky as your foreground, your horizon line, it's going to be blurry, right? Just by the nature of what this thing does, it allows the camera to follow the stars so the planet, right, the horizon line, becomes out of focus. So be aware of that, especially if you've never used a tracker before. It can be a little worrisome when people see their image and they see the foreground all blurry, but the stars nice and sharp, they don't know what happened. It's going to be blurry great tool any tracker is a great tool for getting amazing shots of the night sky but understand your foreground is going to be blurry so a lot of times that we use these for creating blended images and for creating you know composite style images so that we can get a really really good clean amazing night sky and then put that over a foreground shot that we have shot separately so just be aware of that Guys, I hope you have enjoyed this little review and, and tutorial on the Move Shoot Move Tracker. Guys, there wasn't a lot to say about it because it's such a simple device. Move Shoot Move and their development team have done an amazing job uh, creating this. It's a, a fantastic tool. And I am a proud to be a part of the Move Shoot Move team. If you're interested in purchasing one of these, you can go to moveshootmove.com and on checkout, you can use code 319photo for a discount on your very own Move Shoot Move tracker. I've enjoyed being here with you guys, but like I told you at the beginning of the video, I am here in Capitol Reef National Park, which is a beautiful dark sky park. I just finished up one of my unique astro landscape workshops and now it's my time to head out in the field so i'm going to put this baby to good use and i'll see you guys next time